I bought a motorcycle. This is what I think about it after my first season of riding it. Before I got it, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of mainly just video watching. Didn't read too many articles. Didn't talk to too many real people. Just watched a lot of videos on certain questions I had, the quality of the bike, the duration of the bike, how long it lasts, the type of maintenance you gotta do. And we're gonna be talking about all my experiences with that kind of stuff in this video. So you don't see them around a lot. And so they're kind of unique in that sense. And it's just a cool bike to have. I think I wanna say I started at 1600 miles or 1800 miles on the bike when I first bought it and right now we're seeing we're sitting at around right now 3600 miles and so i've put close to 1500 maybe 2k miles on there not good maps not quick maps forgive me nonetheless it's a very durable bike it's very fun to ride i've dropped it a few times i will not lie to you i've crashed a few times but nothing to the point where the bike is inridable unridable inridable actually that's a lie so first story of the video i crashed this bike trying to do a wheelie with nobody else around me actually so nobody saw but told people after i got it fixed after i got it back you know i'm pretty sure almost every biker has been through something like this I'm, and it's like you're gonna go through it you're gonna go through it you're gonna probably wreck at some point hopefully it's not that bad hopefully it's not bad enough to where the bike is totaled and it's fixable and i, I did that I, I was trying to do a wheelie and i looped it i didn't fall or hurt myself or anything i just simply came off the back right here after i fucking skied it and it went like five or 10 feet and then fell on the right side, kind of broke, uh, well my handlebars were crooked and then my shield cover right here from my engine was cracked and so I had to get that fixed and total that was like 300 bucks around there and it has good handling, it has decent seating, it has reactive front brakes but the back brakes aren't as reactive so when you're looking up videos you're gonna hear people say the exact same thing. To brake best on this bike you just gotta use both at the same time back brake and front brake, 70, 60% front brake, probably 70, 30% back brake because the back brake will lock up on you if you slam it, which is what it's supposed to do essentially. But sliding this bike on the back brake is kind of fun, which is why my back tire is kind of bald right now. So I got to get a new one for next season for sure. And individually using the brakes are still decent, but combined they're really good. That was my first crash experience, you know, the looping it. I've had a few close calls besides that and one really close call. So the really close call was when I was basically heading into an intersection where, which is where all the real danger can happen for motorcycles. A lot of it because people are impatient, people ignorant, impatient. Yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. And they'll go, they'll go even if they see you coming because they th think they can make it or they think they can judge your speed and in all reality, they can't. So it happened to me when I was going straight, a car was coming towards me trying to turn right into some Panda Express. It was turning my right, their left. And you know, they're in the turn, turning lane, they turn, I'm coming. And I basically fucking lock in instantly. I can, I, I see it coming. I literally see it about to happen. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way. And it's like one of those things where it's like, you're turning now, you're, you're really turning now. And so I fucking, you know, I, I hit the front brake, back brake. I think I downshifted too, because that's another way to brake on motorcycles is by downshifting and letting the clutch out slowly because you're in a lower gear and the engine wants to go slower obviously. And so that helps as well. But I don't even think in that sense, I really got the time to because it, like, Bro, it was very close. I like, it was so close. I touched their car while I was passing them, but I didn't fall or anything. I just touched it with my hand. And I don't want to go through anything like that again because I just had to keep going. I was coming back from break, going to, going to work. And so it was just a fucking adrenaline dump and a half, man. But that was like my closest call besides actually looping the bitch. And then other things I've done, like close calls, I guess you could say, just like people not seeing me in their blind spot. Uh, I'm in their in the turning lane, that, that kind of stuff. Nothing, honestly, nothing compares to the to that story. Nothing compares to the fucking idiot who tried to turn the Panda Express because they couldn't wait 30 fucking seconds for a guy to go straight and not die. But nonetheless, uh, look, it's a great bike. It's overall very fun to ride. And on an off-road, even with these tires, it is still doable. So don't think that you can't go off-road at all because you don't have off-road tires. Definitely not the case. You can do whatever you want, honestly. I have did one long ride. I rode to Detroit about an hour away from where I am. And I will say it was intense. This bike is not meant to be maintaining speeds of 85, 90 miles an hour. I definitely was not doing that. Definitely was not doing that. But I will say if you are doing that, then it's not meant to do that. And so you don't want to do that often. Maintaining speeds like 75 miles an hour, really 75 is the fastest you should be going on this thing on the highway. Uh, like at a maintained rate, 
you're, you're going to be good. You're not going to be too uncomfortable. You can probably still sit up, but when you're going 85, 90, maxing this thing out on the highway, you're really, you're tucked down, your legs are tightened, so you're not, you know, bow-legged on the bike like this. They're tight. Everything's tight, and you're just kind of like that for the whole ride if you're going a long distance. And so it's not bad, but it's not the best. So I advise getting a windshield, which is something I haven't done, but I plan on doing. And whatever else you can do to prevent the wind from hitting you because the wind on this bike is not your friend. But mods, no, no mods yet. I want to get my muffler changed. It's going to get louder. Who doesn't want to make it a little bit louder? No real timeline on it yet. We'll get there when we get there. Maintenance. So as I was talking about the maintenance part, this is where we have to change the oil, last thing for the season, and then we basically close up shop with the bikes, put stuff in our gas tank so the gas is good to sit for the next three to four months, change the oil, like I said, change the filters, and do all the stuff that you do for the closing the season type. And so we're gonna do his bike, then my bike, Ninja 500. Wait, what, is, what bike is it again exactly? Let, let them know, let the people know. The Ninja 500 uh, SE, you know. Kawasaki, no. and the DRZ 400 SM Suzuki, so. Let's get it. Got all of our tools here. Bunch of oil. Happy fuel. H HF-15. Treats 12 to 15 gallons. Premium fuel stabilizer. This was like 12 bucks? Yeah. Oil kit was probably 60, 70. God. It's cool. It's cold? Eh, a little bit, you know. It's nothing crazy. God damn. <laughs> Joey, come on. Joey, come on. Lock in, lock in. Lock in. <laughs> you gotta like fucking yank that boy. <clears throat> I don't care if I lose the washer. Watch this pole. <laughs> it's gonna be immaculate. No watching. I'll let them know. Okay. Okay. Not even a drop. Not even a drop. Yeah, that's Crody. I think it was like 2,000 miles, 1,500 on it. You don't see no metal coming out of it, so that's good. Is that what you should be looking for? Any other signs? Well, especially if it's a new bike yeah makes sense yeah because if a new bike has metal shavings coming out of the oil when you're draining it it's normal it's just the engine uh breaking down the pistons inside all right now the hard part this filter god damn it's hot too oh yeah you want to get the bike rolling get the oil flowing so it's not cold and come out chunky yeah we both Rode around the block before he came over here and did this. All together, I think the stuff that I bought from my DRZ to change the oil, uh, 30 bucks, 40 bucks max, if that. All you really need is two oil things and a filter and the tools to do it, obviously. Let me know if you know uh, what this is from, too. Hey. Back, back from the 90s. Looking ass. Let's just go go, dude. I've been watching a lot of old shows, actually. I've been watching uh, Ed and Eddie. I watched it for the video that I just dropped. Just to yeah, y'all should go watch. Yes, sir. Link, link right there. And then uh, I told Jalen, too, I'm trying to watch SpongeBob right now, the first, like, three seasons of that because those are the best ones. I just want to get this on because it's fucking hot. You bought a new one, one of those, right? Yeah, it yeah. came with a kit. Yeah, yeah, so just let that shit fall. I'm not falling in there. It's going to splash. Yeah, true, probably. That bitch is hot. <laughs> Don't drop it. Don't, don't drop it. Oh my god. Yeah. No, the only the bad thing is it doesn't have that nut on it. So I'm going to have to go get that crank. See how it doesn't have the nut? Because this is like a default one that came with it from Kawasaki. Yeah. That's an off, not off brand, but off brand. It doesn't have the little nut to make it easier. So you got to get a tool to tighten it up. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Should be hand cranked, but. Hand crank tightening? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to break any seals around there. That'd be bad. Yeah. Get a little glove on so we can... They teach you to lube it up before you put it on. Put it around on the gasket. Just take old stuff. Screw it right back in. Nice, you don't want to catch. Give her a hand crank. Don't, Don't touch the muffler. <laughs> that is hot. That is hot. <laughs> oh, that's hand cranked. 
Give her a good little little pat down. Get your new crush washer. Put it on your little little bolt. Put her in there. Now, now you're supposed to have a torque wrench. Put it 30 pounds, but I'm not rich. Let's give her a little, a little snug. Looks good. Then time to fill her up with oil. Yes, sir. Sorry for the sniffles. It's cold. It is cold, man. Now my bike should take about. It says three some gallons. Or quartz, but I'll put in a couple of them and I'm gonna check the little nub. So you get close up of this, the point pouring it because it's back here. Bitch, I'm sipping tea in your hood. What the fuck is up? Got the long, goddamn, goddamn long ass funnel, goddamn, goddamn head ass funnel, head ass. And it's a good time to see if your uh, your nuts on. See if it's leaking. Check your filter. Pause. Resume. <laughs> oh, I missed. And one's definitely not good. One's definitely not good. He says gonna need at least at least three, maybe four, or you know, something. Especially since you take the filter off. Even more oil disappears. For sure, too. Oh, I'm kind of an idiot. I can't tell if it went down or not. You got to be it by now, right? I don't think so. Put a light. Yeah, it's got to be good now. You can take it out. Let it sit for a minute, let it get it built up in that filter. Two is definitely not enough. Even though it looks, I mean, it looks fine right now. It's a, it's right at the line. Yeah, but it hasn't ran through the system. And yet. it hasn't ran. So if you really want to, give it a start. No, no, don't. It's open, bro. You can't do that. What? The gas, the fucking oil. I can sh lock it. It's right there. Yeah. Dude, we didn't do that last time, though. Yeah, we did. We, after we filled it. I put two of them already. Foaming up, you said. Started seizing up, you said. You want to make sure you see the neutral so we don't have this bike? Well, it probably won't even start. But put the little lid on. Oh, this is going to be held up. Let me get this close to the... A little close to the... A little down. Wait, no, don't put it that close. Don't put it that close. It's going to hear good. It's right a, here? It, no, no, just put it where it is. It's a good mic. right through it yeah. all right now he's gonna put some more in there and that was quick man mine's a bit more a bit longer yeah his filters in a hard get spot all right so i got this aluminum foil because you don't want to get oil where it doesn't need to be and unfortunately the first bolt is in a inopportunistic spot i really don't even know how i did this shit last time Cause this shit is fucking, it's small. Yeah, like who the fuck invented this? All right, whatever. Now I need my tools. Oh, you son of a bitch. Why am I a goddamn bike owner, dude? Why do I own a motherfucking motorcycle? Okay. First thing you want to do. Remove said drain plug, obviously, like I just, I know that, duh, it's over here. <sighs> Remove the drain plug. Then you got a motherfucking, then you take out this bolt that I was trying to just take out. Hmm. Yeah, if it's mine. Yeah. yeah. 
One thing I don't like about Nico's tool setup, that junk is a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a tool guy. I'm not going to lie. You got the 10 millimeter next to your 6 millimeter. Next to the 14. Jesus, fuck! I broke that bitch. You broke it? The seal. Oh. Where do you think I'm at? The fucking washer. We're gonna go to Best Buy. I mean, go to Rose and grab a new one. I'm about to get oil all over my shit. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not about to do it clean. I think you co they covered the muffler. Not the... I don't remember. Oh. I think you covered the muffler the last time. No, you probably just broke it. Like this? You want me to do it just here? No, I'm not scared. I just don't like cover the muffler here and then take no. it out. You don't know how fast it's going to pour out. Sorry, bro. I'm good at everything I do. <laughs> Oi. I got you, pal. <laughs> don't put it there. If it falls in there, you're going to be even more mad. There. I can just see that falling in. <laughs> you go be like me when I didn't have that washer last time. Oh, you got it all over that one. Just put it in there. Fuck me with the magical broomstick and call me Larry Jackson! That was better than I thought it would be. What are you looking at? Just let it sit there for a second. Bring this over here. Bring this over here. A little bit messy, you know. It's not really. It's never a clean job, man. Mm. My bike's a bit harder than his is too, unfortunately. Yeah. You gotta watch a YouTube video on how to do this one. It's that, but like the bolts are just not in like good spots. Like I said, I mean, let's, use, let's use a dirtier one. It's that one? It's there. It was here so? and under here. That's going to stink too when we turn his bike on. No, I'll start doing that other one now. Yeah, where's the, one? where's the nut at? It's way at the bottom. Where's the nut at? Oh, it's right here. I got to put it back in. Take it off the thing real quick. I just got to do sure this. Sure, it has a screwdriver. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm going to take this off. You treat this as a screwdriver until it's... Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Good. That's that tool shit, bro. I ain't never think of that, bro. That's a good tip. I'm just a smart individual. I've never thought of that before. I ain't gonna lie. You think he's gonna pick up my dog and scream it in the back? Nah, I hear it's nothing. <laughs> Alright, cool. Alright. No. Bro, you don't have it. Wait. No, it's 11. Yeah, I, I might not. You said 14? Yeah. This. I don't know if it's gonna fit. It might be too big. That's too big. Wait, is it? Hell yeah, it's too big. <laughs> Let me see that one back. Bro, that dog is something else. It might be on loose. That one fit? Yeah. Don't tighten it. And don't miss that drain plug. God damn, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> You get it? Yeah. <laughs> I think last time you did, we punched the shit out of the back. <laughs> this shit sucks, bro. Give me the extender again. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, push it. Oh, good shit. <laughs> Yo. 
Tools are not cool. <laughs> Bro, this dude is stupid. I've never used that kind of tool. I feel like that's the standard. Nope, not for me. <laughs> there is no standard for me, Joey. <laughs> there is no standard. Just don't lose the washer since you don't have one. I think it's on there. Bro, I don't want her to come out here. But she gonna keep. Nope. Does he get it, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, do I have a choice? Did it come or is it stuck up top? I got it. You got it. Now, if I hit this record button, no, stop. Just record my mic until I hit it again. Yeah. But you can keep it on. Keep it on. Well, I was going to go yell at her. <laughs> keep it on. <laughs> go lay down. The filter's over there, right? Yeah. Or he's getting the shot. Yeah, it's a different angle, I guess. I guess. So that's the second plug drained. Then you got to go ahead and put this KTN filter on. This is an eight. I remember this conversation. Yeah, one of these days you gotta go through this bitch. Put them back in goddamn order. <laughs> <laughs> I think they move around too and uh, I close it. They could. Am I doing it? Or are you doing it? I'm doing it. Man, you got grass all in this meat? You know, I'll be riding it. In the grass? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I told you before I got like when I took out of my driveway, I was on the grass at first and I let go of the clutch and I slipped twice, both ways, before I caught it and just got going. And then we gotta put that uh, screw back on too. I don't know where it went. I think you're stepping on it. It's right here. All right, so go ahead and throw this on real quick. This goes right back under where you got it from. You know, there's nothing wrong, Joy, but watching the video and catching up on the procedure. And making sure you're doing all the steps properly. But you should memorize it. Yeah, I don't disagree. We don't expect failure. <laughs> okay. Good thing this is what you need. Don't do too much or it's going to be a bitch. <laughs> There's enough right there, I can tell. Alright, so now we got to take this off. Is oil going to come out of this shit? Yes. Bro, What? That's, bro, do you know what that's called? Yeah, a filter. It's an oil filter. God. So the oil goes through there and it gets filtered. Yo, I forgot about that. <laughs> bro. So really, you could dump oil into this instead of dumping it in there, but no. it does the same thing. I mean, is it going to spill over this side? No, it's just going to just pour down. I think that's what it is. I'm going to put something there if you want. I mean, we got... Just play, hey, play this video. <laughs> we don't need it. We, we adapt. We adapt to us. Faze adapted ass. Yeah. Ooh, man. He's got a butt shot. I just hold it. I don't even know how to hold it. It's not going to come. Yeah, we'll see. Probably not like we think it is. Don't lose that gasket. Yeah. Is this the same one you got? Yeah, it is. See it? Uh, see the opposite? Because it probably goes one way. It does. Oh, yeah. There's a ring here. Make sure I get this. Nice full ring. You got the bike? Yep. All right. Now we put it here. Put this O-ring back inside of there. Make sure you don't forget that. Very important. Could lube it up a little bit too. Fuck it. Am I doing too much? Who knows? Maybe. But never be too safe. I don't think it's in. Then you got to make sure the arrows are pointing up. Where'd the O-ring go on that? Is it in there? Yeah, it's still in there. Okay. Yeah, these are probably like 10 pounds pr pressure. Yep, don't want to do it too tight. Is that kickstand down? Yeah. Yep. It is? Yeah. <laughs> that bitch is well like a little lean and lean. Yeah, she, she has some give. She does. She does have some give. Next step, next year, we're getting rid of this. Oh, yeah. Facts. The next season ending update. All right, time to throw that oil in. Now we got to throw the oil in, like you said. This is... His bike's 1.9 quarts he needs, but we'll give him two. 
because what are you going to do with that point one left over? Damn. <laughs> it's like putting the thumb. <laughs> you go catch it. <laughs> Come back and hit you in the face. <laughs> you heard it all? No. Oh. Yes, sir. That's the DRZ 400 SMO change for you. <sighs> to end off the 2024 season, bro. It's been fun. One crash. One lost phone. No, we lost your phone. Okay. One, one very broken phone. One broken phone. <laughs> yeah. I've had, no, if I, I think I've had legitimately. Oh, two crashes. No, let me try and count. Let me try and count. I had the, the, the actual loop in my shit. <laughs> I've gone down. I go, I go down behind that trail, and then I did right there. And then well, I'm not going to count the trails, because... I mean, I wasn't with you. I'm, I'm just saying, like, like crashing. Like, okay, like, actually, like, like on the road type shit? Yeah. Because on the trail, is literally just your fault. Yeah, I guess. You can start her up. Let this oil flow in. Let's get this lid at Check, tighten check. Yeah, no oil is looping. The biggest thing is to check the oil, see if it's leaking. Can you turn it on? Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, when I change, this shit is going to be so much louder. Yeah. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap, folks. Yeah, it's starting to heat up now. I, you got to make sure you're cleaning the chain, you know, after you go off-roading, after you go somewhere where you're not on pavement. Now, I wasn't the best at first with this because I didn't have chain lube or chain cleaner, but trust me, guys, you're going to want to get that stuff because it you can actually tell a difference in the performance of the gears when the chain is lubed up. And also, after you ride for a while, your chain might become a little bit loose and so once you tighten that up after a few times of doing it you'll be able to tell the difference between a tight chain and a loose chain when it comes to switching gears and i think it makes a big difference when it comes to doing wheelies because there's not slack in the chain and so the reaction is a lot more instant but let me know in the comments if you guys agree with that or not because i'm not too sure like i said this is my first motorcycle my first season riding a motorcycle at the end of the day this bike cost me around six thousand dollars cash I don't have a loan on it. It's outright. It's mine. That's how I advise you guys get your bikes because these things are not investments. They're not assets at all. They are pure liabilities in multiple senses. If you have a finance bike, that's a liability. And then if you go out riding, you're putting yourself in danger because you're protected less than anybody else on the road. They're liabilities in themselves and then they're liabilities to have if you don't pay them off. And so like you just don't want to get a toy like this and have to have the payment. I don't I don't advise it. It's not financially responsible. So, yeah, I mean, besides that, there's not too much I want to say with this video. This is going to be a nice little video for you guys. Just want to let you guys know, I got a fucking motorcycle! Because I've had one for this whole season now. It's fucking lit. I love it. I'll put some clips in of me and the boy riding and me and Joey. You know, we, we had a lot of fun this season. And I'm sure there's going to be more videos, more updates, more riding talks with you guys. And so if you guys are thinking about getting a DRZ or have a DRZ, let me know in the comments down below. I really want to know if you guys are riders. Let me know where you guys ride at because fuck it, man. Like eventually there's going to be a day where I meet up with you guys and we're riding and I can't wait. I really can't.